Yeah. yeah, so my name is Simon. Uh, I'm an academic from the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. Uh, I'm an exercise physiologist by background, uh, but all my work is around physical activity and mental health. So working at the intersection of physical and mental health and non, non-pharmacological interventions, so things like physical activity and sport and how that can improve mental health and well-being. Yeah, so we've done, done a lot of research around physical activity and mental health in different groups. Uh, one of the targets of my research has been around people exposed to trauma or people who've experienced traumatic events, so that includes uh, veterans, emergency service workers, more recently refugees and asylum seekers, and how sport and physical activity or movement can be used in those contexts to improve mental and physical health. Uh, I guess challenging the idea that exercise is uh, a privilege for those that are lucky enough to be able to afford to participate, to have a safe environment where they can participate and thinking about how can we help the most disadvantaged people or people that otherwise wouldn't be able to enjoy the benefits of moving their body. Um, So that's probably the focus of of our work. I mean, it was by chance that I started working in mental health. I I studied exercise physiology um, and I was fortunate enough to work at a hospital that was treating people with PTSD. Um, And it was really just working one-on-one with clients that I became really interested in this area because I could see the benefits and I could see how for some people it was so important and and when they were able to move their body, um, the immediate benefits that they felt. Um, So I think it was combining my experience seeing it firsthand but then being interested in the research and what does the evidence tell us and also being able to generate evidence. You know, I really like, I get excited about, I never thought I would about numbers and data but being able, when there's a story behind that data, and when you can see the story behind that data, it can be really motivating. And so I think that's what inspires me to be able to, to do this work. And I also get to come to interesting places and meet interesting people, um, like everyone here. So that's that's a really fortunate part of, of my job as well. Yeah, so we know there's a relationship between how we feel and our movement. So physical activity and mental health. And that's the same whether someone has a mental illness or whether they don't have a mental illness. Movement and physical activity can be important. It can help us feel better. And we know that even if you, you sometimes you're having a bad day or whatever might be happening, if you find the energy and the motivation to get up and go for a walk or go for a run or go to the gym, you can feel immediately a bit better. So that's, you know, that's one group of people. Um, But that same benefit can be there for people living with you know, really severe mental illness, or people living in very harsh situations, or people experiencing social disadvantage, um, they can also benefit from from being able to move. But the problem is that we don't often have services available to support people. You know, we don't resource exercise-based programs. Uh, We don't think of them like treatment, and it can be a part of treatment. So I think it's really important the evidence shows us that exercise doesn't replace existing mental health care. So we're not saying that people don't need medication or they don't need talking therapy. That's absolutely not the case. What we're saying is that exercise can be one tool in someone's tool belt as part of their mental health tool belt. So just like some people will need medication or some people will need talking therapy, this activity can still support all of those people into a role in helping improve mental health but also physical health at the same time. Um, you know, there's also some interesting data around prevention and the idea that if we help people to engage in more activity, we might actually prevent cases of, of depression or anxiety. So there's lots of reasons why, uh, for me, the evidence is very strong that this is something important that we should be thinking about. The challenge is, is how do we actually help those people to participate? And so this is where I think it's really interesting to think about different professionals that don't normally work in mental health and how they can potentially contribute. So one example is physical therapists. You know, we know that in other countries in the world there's a a long history of mental health physiotherapy. Um, But they are a unique profession who are used to working with the body. They work with the body but some of the interventions they provide can also have an impact on the mind as well. 
And so there's a very interesting opportunity, I think, to uh, think about interdisciplinary and multidis- multidisciplinary care of people with poor mental health and thinking about how we can keep the body in mind, so to speak, and, and have, have those physical health interventions as well. Yeah, so I guess for me, it was thinking about the evidence around trauma and physical activity and then being interested about, well, we know the evidence in high-income countries. What about in low-resource contexts or what about in, in contexts of uh, where people are exposed to high levels of traumatic experience, so like a refugee context where there's forced displacement? Um, so when I first went to a refugee camp in, in Bangladesh, um, it's very clear that sport is part of the, the fabric of the community. If you give a young kid a ball, they're going to kick the ball and look for a friend to kick the ball to. And I think that image to me beautifully sums up what we're talking about. You know, movement and sport can be fun, it can be enjoyment, uh, it can improve things like social cohesion, it can also be a pathway into mental health care. Well, let's think about stigma, for example. You know, there's in many places around the world, stigma towards mental illness is still a big thing. Um, but potentially sport and physical activity interventions can be used as a way of counteracting that stigma and a way of actually helping people to engage with mental health treatment, mental health services. Um, So there's a real opportunity about uh, bringing them together, bringing physical activity, sport and, and mental health together to reach more people and improve health, which is ultimately what we're trying to do. It can also, we know that addressing physical health um, and things like sport and exercise are often very acceptable to people. And so there's a way that we can utilize that, for example, hard to reach groups like young people that maybe don't want to come and talk to a mental health professional. They maybe have views around that. But imagine if you had the mental health professional inside the sporting organization where the kids were coming. Um, suddenly you're, you're, you're increasing access and you're thinking about novel ways that we can actually reach people that might be hard to reach through traditional mental health services. Uh, so Addy Moves is, is a what we call like a not gym. So it's a, essentially a gym that looks and feels nothing like a gym. And it's targeting people that experience social disadvantage. So we're focusing on, on women from a refugee background, but also people experiencing financial hardship. Um, and our not gym is embedded in a community centre in Australia. So it's co-located with other services that people need, which means that it's really easy for them when they come for another service to come and pop in to the facility and start an exercise program. So we're trying to provide access to exercise for people that would have otherwise have no opportunity to get those benefits from being able to move their body. So we have fantastic exercise physiologists who, who provide those interventions. Of course, we've got a team doing great research. We also provide practicum opportunities for students so our, our exercise physiology students can be exposed to other populations and diverse groups from the community that otherwise they would have no access to. Um, so that's an ongoing project and hopefully we will have lots of, of research outputs that we can share with you the next time we see you. Um, tips, I think it's an exciting time to be working in that area. I think there's so much opportunity and there's opportunity in areas that we probably haven't even thought about. Um, when I was studying my course, I didn't know mental health was even a, a, an area that we could get into. Um, so I think be, be curious about what's possible um, and find what it is that you, you enjoy doing and then find a way to to, to do that and don't be afraid to reach out to people and to um, yeah to, to pursue what it is that you, you want to do and to get experience across different areas and different settings um, including coming to Australia everyone is welcome <laughs> Lead and Innovate